As we begin to look at bringing together all of the identities from trig, all the properties, all the key points, all the relationships, we're taking a look at how they can help us with solving trig equations and doing trig proofs. In the previous video, we looked at how the concepts all come together to help us solve equations. In this video, we're going to take a look at how all the properties and identities and relationships come together to help us with finding trig proofs. The question we're going to answer today is how do we prove a trig identity? And we're going to do that by working through a few examples. Nothing really new here, just bringing together several concepts in one big video. As we solve these trig identities or prove these trig identities, the key is that we must always work on one side. We can't do things to both sides of the equation. We can't simplify one side a bit and simplify the other side a bit. We have to always work on one side to try and end up with the other side. So for example, if we have 1 minus the sine of theta over the cosine of theta is equal to the cosine of theta over 1 plus the sine of theta. We're going to attempt to prove this statement. And this one's kind of tricky because they both look just about as simple left and right sides. So we could pick either side to work with. And one additional strategy that we can use to help us with an identity or even solving on occasion, we're going to steal from what we saw back in pre-calc 1 with rationalizing numerators and denominators. And that was multiplying by a conjugate. 1 minus sine has a conjugate of 1 plus sine. And when I multiply by that conjugate of 1 plus sine on top and bottom, let's look at what that gives us. When we multiply by a conjugate, we'll end up with 1 minus sine squared of theta over cosine theta times 1 plus sine theta. Now that becomes interesting because this numerator, 1 minus sine squared, you should recognize from the Pythagorean identity that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And if I subtract the sine squared from both sides, we see cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So that numerator, 1 minus sine squared, is the same as cosine squared theta over the denominator of cosine theta times 1 plus sine theta. And that's really nice because now it's factored. And I have cosines on top and bottom. We can cross out one cosine from both the numerator and denominator. And that leaves us with cosine theta over 1 plus sine theta, which was what we wanted, w to the fifth, from the original problem. We have proved this identity using that Pythagorean identity and a nice little trick from pre-calc 1 of multiplying by a conjugate. Let's try another one. Let's try cosine squared theta plus cotangent of theta over cosine squared theta minus cotangent of theta is equal to cosine squared of theta tangent of theta plus 1 over cosine squared theta tangent of theta minus 1. As we look at uh, solving this, I would compare and notice both sides have cosine squared. But what we don't have is the tangent on the first term, top and bottom. So what would happen if I multiplied by tangent theta on top and bottom and distribute that tangent through? If I do that, I get cosine squared theta times tangent of theta 
plus, then we have tangent times cotangent. And I remember that tangent times cotangent, those are reciprocals of each other. Tangent theta times cotangent becomes tangent times 1 over the tangent. Those divide out, leaving just 1. Same thing in the denominator. We have cosine squared theta tangent theta minus tangent times cotangent being reciprocals is 1. And right away, we have gotten to the original thing, QED, another way to end a proof. We have demonstrated what we wanted. They are the same. We used one side to end up with the other side. How about this one? Let's do tangent of theta plus the sine of theta over 2 tangent of theta is equal to cosine squared of theta over 2. We have a formula, if I use the right side this time, of cosine of theta over 2. That is plus or minus the square root of cosine theta plus 1 over 2. But because the whole thing is squared, we're going to square the whole thing. And that's really nice because we square a square root, and we end up with the guts on the inside. And whether it's positive or negative, when we square it, we end up with a positive. And now it's just the cosine of theta plus 1 all over 2. Well, we want tangents. How do we get tangents? One thing I think about tangents is tangents is sine theta over cosine theta. What happens if we multiply by sine theta over cosine theta in both the numerator and the denominator? When we distribute through, the cosine will divide out, leaving just behind the sine of theta, plus 1 times sine over cosine is sine over cosine which reduces to just tangent, all over 2 times sine over cosine, which is just tangent. And notice we started with the right side and did some manipulation and ended up with the left side. We can use a solid box to finish our proof. We have proved that these two are, in fact, equal. So that one uses our half angle formula in order to prove the relationship. What about 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta times secant squared theta? That's equal to tangent squared theta. Well, let's see what we can do with our trig properties to simplify the left side. There's more to work with over there. Cosine 2 theta, we can do something with that. We've got a couple options with cosine of 2 theta. Let's go with 2 cosine squared minus 1. And the reason I'm picking the cosine 1 is secant deals with cosine as well. In fact, let's go ahead and make that into cosines. Secant squared is 1 over cosine squared theta. And if we were to distribute, uh, let's distribute first the 1 over cosine squared through. That gives us 1 minus. 2, the cosine squareds divide out, minus 1 times 1 over cosine squared is 1 over cosine squared. But 1 over cosine squared is secant squared of theta. Now if I distribute the negative through, we get 1 minus 2 plus secant squared of theta which, if we combine like terms, becomes secant squared theta minus 1. 
which is really nice because you should recognize secant squared minus 1. It comes from one of our Pythagorean identities. Remember, if sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, secant squared means we're dividing by cosine squared. And if I divide everything by cosine squared, that gave me tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta which told me that tangent squared is secant squared minus 1, which is what we have. So secant squared minus 1 equals tangent squared. And I'll use another solid box on this one. Our proof is complete. We got the right side of the equation. So this one used a couple formulas in order to help us finish the proof. There were reciprocal identities in there. There was the double angle identity. There was the Pythagorean identity. We had to use several of them to get there. But they all can come together in one proof in this way. Let's do one more as we wrap up our video. Let's do the sine of 3 theta over the sine of theta minus the cosine of 3 theta over the cosine of theta. And this one's interesting because it actually equals 2. Let's take a look at how that could be possible. Clearly, the left side is the more complicated side. That's the side we're going to work with. And one thing I see is we're doing subtracting of two fractions. So let's try and get a common denominator of these two fractions by multiplying by cosine on the first fraction and sine on the second fraction. And when we do, we'll end up with the sine of 3 theta times the cosine of theta minus the cosine of 3 theta times the sine of theta all over our common denominator of sine theta cosine theta. Now, what you might notice is this is a formula that we've seen before. It's the sine of alpha plus beta formula. That is equal to the sine of 3 theta Actually, with the minus in there, it's minus theta all over sine theta cosine theta using that sum and difference formula. And when I simplify there, that's going to give me the sine of 2 theta over sine theta cosine theta. And be careful, we cannot cross off the sines because they're not of the same angle. But we do have a formula for a double angle on sine. Sine of 2 theta is 2 sine of theta cosine of theta over sine theta cosine theta, which then becomes really nice because now they are the same. The sines and cosines divide out, and we're left with 2, which is what the other side of the equation is. We can wrap this proof up with QED. And we have proved the two sides are equal. With these proofs, the best way to get good at them is to struggle through several of them. The more you do, the quicker you'll recognize the patterns and what you're looking for. So take the time to struggle through the homework assignment. Try as many of them as you can. Practice, practice, practice. And let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.